What games were so bad they crashed the entire video game market? What games turned decade long development cycles into underwhelming stinkers? Here are 15 of the biggest video game flops you will ever see. I'm Danger Dolan, and today I will be your narrator. Number 15. In 2006, IGN named Okami their game of the year. It's a beautiful game with fun gameplay, compelling story, and art that is truly one of a kind, even a decade later. The original release of the game maintains a score of 93 on Metacritic, and yet, nobody cared. It sold less than 600,000 units worldwide, earning it a Guinness World Record for least commercial successful game of the year winner. Number 14. Shenmue's greatest misfortune is that it was a Dreamcast game. Like Okami, Shenmue is beloved and critically acclaimed with sky-high production values. Actually, the production values are a bit too high. Shenmue cost $70 million to make, but only sold a little over 1 million copies. That's not terrible for a Dreamcast game, but it's way less than what Sega needed to turn a $70 million game into a profit. Number 13. Psychonauts might finally be coming around. Although the game sold only 100,000 units during its initial release, it has earned more via a digital re-release on PC than it ever did as a console game. Now the quirky Double Fine property has a new lease on life, with a VR game and a sequel coming in the near future, apparently. Still though, those initial sales basically drove Majesco out of the video game publishing market. Number 12. Sega and Platinum Games teamed up to create a masterpiece in Bayonetta. And hey, Mad World was pretty good too. But Mad World had the misfortune of being an action game beat em up on the Wii with motion controls. That's just too much waggle. The game sold 123,000 units in the first six months and now populates a number of Wii games actually worth playing lists. Number 11. There are plenty of video game console flops that are well known, like the Virtual Boy, the Ouya, the Wii U, the Sega Saturn, the N-Gage, and countless others. But the Atari Jaguar deserves a special mention. The Jaguar was a 64-bit system that came out while the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis were duking it out, and it blew both of them away in terms of power. However, Atari sort of forgot that people want games with their console. Jaguar was sunk by a sea of garbage games and a total lack of a compelling title to drive interest. Atari itself also went down with the ship, never creating a home console again. Which is more advanced? Jaguar! 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 Bullshit. Number 10. Hey, you guys remember when Sony saw the success of the Wii and hastily cobbled together the six axis controller? And then they tried to convince us that motion controls in a normal controller are a good idea and they should design games around it. Yeah, Lair remembers too. The short version is the game that was supposed to show off the six axis controller didn't work properly and nobody bought it. It was an embarrassment. And then Sony still decided to make the PlayStation move, which would have a spot on this list, if not for it being rescued by PSVR. Number 9. Angel of Darkness is basically why Tomb Raider stopped being a AAA franchise for a while there. It actually sold reasonably well, moving a respectable 2.5 million copies. But the game itself is awful, full of bugs, clunky ass action. It took years for Tomb Raider to rebuild its reputation after this critical flop. Number 8. Sometimes games take a long time in development because the team is trying to polish every aspect of the game to make sure it's perfect. Other times, you have Duke Nukem Forever, the signature example of development hell. Gearbox basically just got the game to a completed state so it could die a natural death in the wild after a 15 year development cycle. R.I. fucking P. You're an inspiration for bird control. Number 7. Sonic the Hedgehog hasn't exactly been putting out smash hits over the last two decades, but the Sonic Boom franchise managed to dig the franchise in just a little deeper, creating a game that bottomed out of both sales charts and critics rankings. These two games were exclusive to the Nintendo Wii and 3DS, combined for sales of about 620,000 copies, the worst selling Sonic games ever. Not cool, Sonic. You locked us in. Number 6. Realistically, Ubisoft was basically asking for trouble when they named their game after a Frederick Nietzsche book on the philosophy of individual morality. The game itself was great, interesting mechanics, good storyline, 
good characters, but the sales were never there for it, which is why Ubisoft keeps teasing a sequel and then not doing it. Number five. Brutal Legend is what happens when an indie darling like Double Fine tries to join forces with a major publisher to put out a game with a bunch of celebrities. It was originally set to be published by Activision, but a complex merger situation led to it being dropped and later picked up by EA. Brutal Legend is a heavy metal themed game with a mix of action and real time strategy elements starring a beefy Jack Black. You've likely heard of it since it got advertising space literally everywhere. It's not a bad game, but it only moved 215,000 units during its initial release period, which is pretty terrible. So, you wanna help me fight demons and stuff? Nah. Number four. You all know the story, it's just too obvious it has to be here, but come on, Atari literally dumped an overstock of this game in a landfill and helped crash the video game industry. They dumped 700,000 cartridges in the New Mexico landfill in total. It would have been unreasonable to not include it in the list. Number three. Like Duke Nukem Forever, but without the cult following, Too Human was intended to be a PlayStation 1 game, and then it was a GameCube game. And then it was finally released on the 360, some 9 years after it was announced. The final development cost was yeah, akin to Shenmue, about 60 to 100 million bucks. And even worse, the game ended up in a legal battle with Epic Games over its use of Unreal Engine. Epic won the suit, and developer Silicon Knights was ordered to remove the game from digital marketplaces and recall and destroy all disc-based copies of the game. Which is pretty fucking hardcore. Purge it from existence. You're a terminated fucker. Number two. Ooh, Pac-Man. Like E.T., this game takes a property that people loved and then grinds it into the dirt. Also like E.T., this game is largely credited for crashing the video game industry in 1983. It's kind of like Pac-Man, only with grading sound effects, horrible visuals, clunky ass gameplay, and a smaller map. So basically, it's not Pac-Man. Number one. Daikatana changed the way video games are marketed because everyone learned from its mistake. The infamous John Romero is about to make you his bitch ad is now a punchline for a game that swelled to astronomical levels of hype, only to backfire when it turned out to be a drab mediocre shooter with frustrating mechanics. This is the game that taught developers that too much hype can be a bad thing. So guys, which game project is the biggest flop to you? Let us know in the comment section down below, we'll pin a favorite to the top! Guys, have you ever tried playing Super Mario Bros. 1 without killing Goombas? Have you ever finished Night to the Old Republic without using lightsabers or force powers? If you're a fan of custom game challenges like blindfolded Mario Kart, you should check out gaming.planetdolan.com. We've got a catalog of gaming challenges for retro games, new games, everything. If you can't find what you're looking for, feel free to suggest some. Links for the site down below, go check it out! That is it for this countdown. Have a good one!